everyone, it's Wendy Kaylelo here, and as always, I do hope that this message finds you well. Now, um, as it's the beginning of Endometriosis Awareness Month, I thought I would just be sharing uh, throughout this month some, just some amazing, inspiring stories. Uh, as you, if you've been listening to me for a while, awareness is important. Uh, more awareness for the rest of the population in the world who don't have a clue what women have be, have had to go through every month or for years, in some cases, decades. But for from me and from my perspective, it's letting people know that an awareness uh, is that you know it's not a life sentence because I think that there's a, a, a disturbing narrative out there that once you have endometriosis, you're stuck with it for life and you're not. And I am living testament of that. And of course, there's many, many other women now too. So um, I try to do my best to get these messages out there to keep giving you. Uh, this hope that you can actually turn your body around. As you know, the key thing is to remember it takes time. We're all a very uh, impatient nation these days. We, we, we're we looking for that quick fix. There isn't a thing as quick fix. It's like taking an acorn seed and putting it in the ground and standing over it and like getting upset and whinging and complaining and shouting at the, at the acorn seed in the ground saying, why won't you be an oak tree? It takes time for the roots to go down, they go down first before you start to see some shoots coming up through the soil. So again, really, really important to uh, set expectations, but equally, I want you to know that you have an amazing body, even if your body is not feeling like that right now, it's just, it's trying to get your attention. So again, really important to remember that as well. But um, one of our lovely uh, students who has completed the End of Boss Academy recently, um, as part of the, the completion, it's it's a year long program, but as part of the completion, she, they have to do an essay. Um, and again, you know, I'm always so excited when former students agree to come on and share their experience. If, you know, if you're a woman that's been listening to these podcasts for a while, you'll, you'll know that it's obviously quite nerve wracking to kind of come on and put yourself out there publicly. Um, I've shared my own journey. I was quite a private, quite a shy person, but equally this, this mission is bigger than me. And I want to, you know, to overcome all of that so that I can be on here, uh, put myself out to help other women. So as I see, some women are just too shy to come on and share their stories. And I totally respect that. Other women, you know, they're they're super brave and they agree to have uh, their experience uh, shared uh, with other women to give them hope. So, um, but this in particular instance, um, one of my ladies uh, called Jessica from America, she wrote her essay and she wrote it in a way that was just really beautiful, kind of sharing the emotional element of the journey. And she has agreed for me to read out her essay um, as, as a podcast because she's too shy to come on at the moment. I'm obviously, we're all encouraging her to keep building her confidence, which of course she's doing week on week, month on month. So I thought I would read that out for you so that you can just, you know, again, get a sense of what is possible? Um, and as you know, by now, it's not just, you know, putting the condition in remission. It's so much more than that. And if you've been drawn to me, you've been drawn to me for a reason. You know, there is plenty pressure and noise and things out there in the world. But if you found me and you're listening to me, there's a reason for it. And I'm going to be encouraging you at the end of this uh, sharing of her her essay to take some action. You know, if you haven't bought my, my book, then please go and buy my book. You can even get the audio book for free if you sign up to Amazon Audible. You know, there's like no excuse. You know, I mean, I know that um, you know, with the cost of living crisis, you know, some people are in dire straits, but you are important, you're worth the investment. So please make sure to prioritize yourself in whatever way you can, because you don't deserve to be in pain for the rest of your life. So I'm going to read this out. So this is her end of boss essay. And, um, and then I'll come back and chat at the end. She says, I find Wendy's story very inspiring. It's inspiring to know that a woman who has similar diseases to mine, endometriosis, adenomyosis, cysts, fibroids, etc., has been able to put them all into remission and live a happy, pain-free life. A life full of health, vitality, and purpose. A woman who was once bedridden and near total organ failure has come back from all of that and is now helping other women like myself heal. I am so thankful that I found Wendy and her team and I've been able to be a part of this class and this course for the past 12 months. I've learned so many things about myself and about endometriosis and I'd like to take this time to share just some of the things that I've learned as there are so, so many. I know that this is just the beginning of my own journey now and that I have so many more things to learn along the way. I'm excited for what else is to come. 
I do believe that we're here on earth just for such a short time to grow and to give. And through this course, I've been I've grown in so many ways. I really enjoy getting to know Wendy and her team. It was so refreshing to interact with other women who truly understood my health conditions. I'm thankful to Wendy, Maxine and the whole Enneboss team for all that they have done to support me in the past 12 months and for all their genuine kindness, love and caring. I have no I've noticed based on my personality or who I am that I like to be contemplative and hold space for deep concerns and concepts and this class has allowed me to do this and was a really good fit for me. One significant thing that I learned in the class is that my answers lie within. When something came up in my personal life or with my health, the end of us team would guide me back very lovingly, very gently back to myself, to my inner wisdom, my inner parent to find the answers. I can certainly gather knowledge and information from other people and I can learn from other people, but ultimately I learned I know what is best for me. I never had the confidence for that before. I ultimately know the path that I need to take to heal. As Wendy and her team have told us, each woman's life experiences are unique and each woman's healing journey is therefore unique. It's not a matter of if I will heal, it's a matter of when I will heal. I am starting to discover what makes me happy, what I need and what I want without guilt or shame. Another thing that I learned is that everything that I need is within me. I'm whole uh, on my own. And from that place of wholeness, I am best able to give to others, be it a partner, my children, family or friends. I really enjoyed going on the membership sites and taking in the relevant content there. It was there that I learned about the five P's, produce, products, property, people, and past. I devoted a lot of time to the, the programs doing a radical shift of my diet and eating habits. I would share my food monitor sheets each week with the team and they would guide me on what to eat. Receiving Wendy's new cookbook has also been a great help guiding me towards foods that are nourishing for my body. I swapped out most of my products and I'm still working on this as this is a process. And my work with people has been life changing, as I'll explain more below. The past is something that I was just that I'm just starting to get into more and more. And it is a future goal of mine, as I will outline below. I got to know my parts, my personality parts throughout the program as well. Little me, in inverted commas, or my inner child, became a large part of me that was loved and accepted and integrated. We would go on what we class as self-dates each week to shops and walk in the rain or be by the creek. On one self-date, I went to a consignment shop and bought a lovely vase for my home. I later shared a photo of it with our private within our the private Facebook group. I then drew a picture of this vase and shared it with Wendy and Maxine. On yet another self date, little me and I ran through the woods. We reached an area that was overlooking a creek, and we let out a big yelp and we said, "I am free." I went to an estate sale on a more recent self date in my community and purchased a beautiful discounted mirror for my home. I also got connected with little me through many artistic drawings on paper and using sidewalk chalk outdoors. I felt lightness, happiness and much laughter when I would do these fun activities and connected with my inner child. My inner child started to feel safe and trust me. You will remember that how hard it was for me to spend any time on my, myself, uh, let alone buy anything for myself. So this felt significant. My adolescent part revealed herself to me as well. She reminded me of music that I used to listen to back in the 1990s, like Al Alanis Morissette, Blues Traveler and Third Eye Bind. She reminded me of the joy of driving fast with the radio blaring and she reminded me of breaking little rules here and there, like going through an exit on my gated neighborhood when the gate was broken. She inspired me to cut my hair short and really to start standing up for myself when people tried to treat me like a doormat. My teenage adolescent part was bold, a little rebellious, and of course, fun. I connected with my inner parent and inner wisdom part as well. This was done through journaling mainly. The part learned how to take the driver's seat on the bus and listen to other stronger, you know, domineering parts like the perfectionist, the inner critic, the skeptic, the pusher, and the people pleaser, but encourage them all to stay in their seats and bond together. My inner wisdom part lovingly said, I've got this to all of those other parts or would negotiate with these stronger parts. 
In this process, I've learned to trust myself more, have compassion, acceptance for myself more, and even love myself more. I never thought this was possible. This parenting part helped me to nurture myself like I would one of my very own three little children. I would ask myself in a loving voice, what do you need in this moment? This inner parent part encouraged me to drink my power shake in the morning, to journal every morning when I woke up, to take time to rest, relax, meditate frequently throughout the day. This parent part helped me to be the observer of my thoughts and feelings and just notice my thoughts and my beliefs and feelings, as well as notice what was happening around me, whether it would be the produce I was eating, the products I was putting on my body, or the people who were about me. I parented myself in so many beautiful ways. The awareness that I've developed from this program is profound. I feel like this is the only just the beginning of my journey, really. As my awareness grows, I'm getting more in touch with who I am at my core. That is something that this course has taught me, is to find who I am at my core. Wendy's saying of free to be me really resonated with me, and I latched onto this. I'm at a critical time in my life where I'm finding out who I am, what I like, what makes me happy, without all of that noise and pressure from partners, parents, or friends. Just like Elsa in the movie, Frozen goes up to the mountain and is finally able to be herself. That is something that I desire, and I've started to slowly find that through this program. I've begun to take off the society, culture, religion, family conditioning that have been bound to me, and I'm discovering who me, Jessica, is. This is a very challenging process, to say the least, at times. Wendy has conveyed to us that endometriosis shows up in a woman's body to force us to look inward. I believe that this is very true in my experience so far. Healing from endometriosis and all of its co-diseases or co-conditions is an inside job for sure. One thing that really struck me is how much people who are around me can affect me physically. I have had family members around me recently create incredible body reactions such as diarrhea, migraines, pain in the neck, head and shoulders and in my back. I desire to surround myself now with people who are uplifting, positive and make me feel good. Not those who make me feel heavy, guilty, ashamed and have a big boat ropes binding me and are like albatross around my neck. I desire freedom as any human, as any woman does. I desire emancipation as any human does. One thing that I'll remember is that people come and go in your life. Wendy told us through metaphors that people sometimes get on and off the train stops of our life. Some stay in the train a long time and some only a short time. They get off at the station. All of these people teach us lessons, though, as we move along about ourselves. I shared with Wendy in one group call that I'm working on surrendering more in my life. And she guided me towards understanding that we are powerless over other people, places and things. And we are so powerful over ourselves. So we recognize what we can control and let go of what we can't. And sometimes we may need to bless and release certain people. This was an impactful concept to embrace. Through this course and program, I've learned that it's okay to set boundaries. This was a huge shift for me and my life has changed in so many positive ways. I learned that it's okay for me to say no and to know in different ways. My strong people-pleasing part had always focused on what other people needed first, and I allowed myself to get on the table uh, to, for scraps and crumbs. I learned effective ways to set boundaries and get what I needed, while at the same time being respectful of others. Assertion rather than aggression. The boundaries that I have set in the past 12 months have been noteworthy. I went from just doing what family members wanted me to do to doing what worked for me. I got creative. I thought outside the box. For example, when family members visited my town, they were now not to have to come to my house. We would instead meet at neutral locations. While these were just little steps, they were big changes for me in my life and have led to increased freedom and joy and laughter and happiness and lightness. And I will continue to work on setting boundaries because I see how powerful they are. The coaching that I received from both Maxine and Wendy was invaluable. It was so amazing to have a loving, reflective presence encouraging me, understanding me and listening to me. 
They got me to connect with all of my parts, connect with my truth, and guide me towards setting boundaries with others. Wendy told me things like, this is your life now. This is your chance to have a seat at the table of life, and or you deserve the very best. And they both saw the good in me at the core, and they really believed in me. They truly believed that I could heal, and I am healing. It's a slow process. They saw me in a different way than many others have seen me. Others who have projected their own beliefs and criticisms and judgments onto me, like some family members. They saw the good in me deep down. Some defining moments during the coaching sessions, Wendy told me that this is my life now. What do I want from the table of life? I deserve the best. I looked at Maxine through the computer screen. And I realized that she did not have my answers. She could help guide me to my answers and listen to me, but she did not have the answers. I realized that when I was talking to Wendy that I was carrying some of my parents' pain like a suitcase and that I could give it back to them. I got pretty focused on the produce throughout the course and I put a lot of energy into doing radical shift of my eating habits. I remember Wendy telling me that the, um, the, the resting is more important than the peanut butter and I just because I just kept pushing myself too hard. Another time I was lamenting to Maxine that I wonder if I'll ever been able to connect with another person. And she said, I could connect with myself. And that hit me as a big wow. Also, Wendy would tell us that there was no knight in shining armor coming to rescue us. And I realized that my health was in my own hands now. In one session, I asked Wendy how she got to be so successful. And she said she just took one day at a time in ant-sized steps, not even baby steps, but ant-sized steps. Another time I was portraying to Wendy my current experiences with my parents, and Wendy said, how does it feel to know the source of some of your pain? And there were lots of many other beautiful moments too. The nature metaphors throughout the program had a big impact on me. We're instructed to plant seeds and watch them grow. And while my plant is still fragile, it continues to grow stronger and stronger every day and the roots are stronger and stronger. I have felt like I have been in the cocoon of chaos, another nature metaphor that Wendy coined throughout this program. As I navigate finding my voice, finding out who I am and setting stronger boundaries and saying no to others, I am still currently in this cocoon and waiting the day that I can exit as a beautiful butterfly. Wendy said that we all sought her out for a reason. And I do believe that this program is what I needed at this current time in my life. It was a challenging program at times, but it provided the insight necessary to allow me to move forward. I enjoyed meeting other women who have my conditions and also understand the pain and suffering of the disease. I enjoy connecting with many in our private Facebook group and the group sessions that were conducted with Maxine and Wendy. I historically tend to be a more private person, so it was hard for me to come out of my shell and put myself out there, but it also has been so good for me. On one group call, we were asked to write down all our beliefs and share with the group. Through this call, my guiding belief, I'm not capable, was shared and transformed into I am okay as I am. I found it inspiring listening to the success stories of other women on the membership sites who have done the hard things and are now further down the end of both pathway on the journey, free, pain-free and living their dreams. I still have some ways to go, but I feel like now I'm on a good path. And with time, I too will find what these women have found. I am trying to be loving and compassionate towards my body as it gives me messages about what's going on around me or things that I need to change. Listening to my body wisdom has shown me many things. As mentioned above, it has shown me people who may not be the, the most elevating to be around. At the same time, it has shown me people who have my best interests at heart. Wendy has told us that our bodies are always trying to communicate with us. And my heart has the wisdom to share with me what it is that I need. I'm still exploring this more. Wendy expressed that she had chains around her heart based on past experiences and trauma. And I feel similarly. I would like to take the walls down with others and connect with other people with an open heart but it's a long journey to do this due to the trauma of the past. The trauma has to be addressed first, and I recognize that. My past trauma is something that I would like to pursue further, whether it be through reading, EMDR, or counseling or therapy. As Wendy has said, we have shoved our past traumas 
misfortunes and mistreatments and feelings deep down into our pelvis, and it is showing up as pelvic pain and or disease. Another point is that the body is the last to shift in the healing process. So I need to keep remembering this and focusing on the emotions, embracing them indeed. A guiding principle that I have decided to adopt is to ask myself in each moment, is what I am currently doing leading me to health and healing or to further disease of the body? I've asked myself the question, who would I be without my pain? For, for I've had the pain my entire life in one form or another from a very young age. And I asked ask myself before, why wouldn't I let myself go of the pain? I think the pain in some way may have served me over the years to switch off subconsciously from what was going on around me and the pain and the pain of the emotions. I'm still discovering my true answers to this, but I've always been in pain to some degree or another from a young age. Wendy helped me see that I'm not just carrying my pain or was carrying my pain, but I'm carrying the pain of the ancestral line, my parents and other past generations of women. I documented my pain for a couple of weeks and shared this with the team. It was hard being vulnerable and expressing this pain to others. Endometriosis and its co-diseases have such a private, personal impact on certain areas of the body. It was hard to write down those body words that I have been ashamed unshamed by society to feel were indeed bad words in some way but there are parts of me that like documenting what was happening in my body as it been crying out for me to change things and the pain was away from my body to finally get my attention I see that now I did not have struggles with infertility having endometriosis and I'm deeply thankful thankful for my three beautiful children but the pain as I say had been a big part of my life for the vast majority of my life and I feel like I've always had pain in one way or another. Of course, when my period started in adolescence, my pain got very, very high and I was put on birth control as a teenager. And this pill I would stay on for almost 20 years. This pill masked and dulled some of the symptoms for all those years. I've also had the digestive issues like gas and bloating and the difficult bowel movements for as long as I can remember. This makes me question other diseases like IBS and SIBO. I remember going to the beach with my friends in high school and only eating yogurt that day because I knew my stomach would not be bloated in my bathing suit. The loss that I've experienced from having endometriosis and its co-diseases all these years, and these decades, have been undiagnosed. Uh, and then, then being undiagnosed is, is astounding. I'm currently grieving these losses, these losses of years that I didn't get to live fully. Just some of them being the loss of a flat stomach all these years, the hiding behind jackets, not feeling comfortable in my own beautiful body or even a bathing suit, the excess gas, the bloating, the bleeding, and of course, the pain, the pain that never seemed to go away. I don't know what my life would be like without pain. This is an area that I need to expand more time on. I thought it was normal to feel so unwell, a word that many endoboss women use to describe the condition. But I am discovering that the way I felt for the past 40 years is not how our higher power or hugs, higher power universe, God, God is source, the divine intends us to feel. As mentioned above, I believe that we are in this earth to grow and to give, and we are here for only a short time. I want to give to others, but right now I'm learning to focus my purpose and my mission on me. I have to be in a place of health from which I'm able to give to others. Wendy has shared with us that she was bedridden trying to save the world and she couldn't even save herself. I'm not sure yet what my purpose is. Right now I'm focusing on me and my health and my children. I have three wonderful children. I believe that my purpose will be revealed to me in due course when the higher power of the universe is ready to show me. I found it refreshing that my journal became my go-to. Throughout the course, Wendy and Maxine would encourage us to journal about whatever was bothering us, and that really felt empowering. I had to have a safe place to go to to understand and process what was happening in our lives at the particular time. The parts of me who showed up to journal each morning before my children got up were afraid sometimes, hopeful, angry, sad, grieving, distressed, sometimes happy. There were a whole range of feelings and emotions and the different parts made themselves known through the writing. But there was always the parent part overseeing it all, making sense of it all, guiding it all. 
I allowed myself to experience all feelings that would come up because Wendy told us that all feelings are okay. And I'm going to repeat that. All feelings are okay. And my children were taught this lesson from me that all feelings are okay too, which is now going to be breaking the ancestral generational patterns and trauma. Something that I'm currently working on too is my beliefs. I bought a photo of a woman off Amazon and framed it. And it says, she believes that she could, so she did. I posted this on the, on the VIP Facebook group and put it on the dresser in my room to look at throughout the day. The mind is a powerful tool and I'm working towards truly believing that I can fully heal. Having role models like Wendy and Maxine who've come before me and healed is helpful. I'm working through all of this. This is a leap of faith that Wendy talks about. It's hard to imagine my life without pain because it's always been there, serving me in one way or another. But parts of me know it's possible to be totally pain-free as other women with endometriosis live this way. By taking this program, I have lots of tools now to address my endometriosis, adenomyosis, cysts, fibroids, adhesions. I have two daughters, so I can take this knowledge and help them too to learn the tools that they do not ever need to get sick as I was. They can be empowered. By taking this course, I have felt like I have been a good role model to them, to my daughters. Often my children would read the back of food labels right along beside me and were excited when a food item only had one or two ingredients or was organic. Another tool that was so helpful was a meditation we were encouraged to do or the relaxation 30 minutes per day. I would lie down on my bed and listen to meditations or music from Kelly Harrell or On Boundaries or on another concept that I was working on, for example, trauma, and wake back up feeling energized and refreshed. Wendy taught us that meditation is a way that we can receive our information and guidance from above and then transmit these received messages through our journaling. Wendy's sayings helped me carry on when it got challenging sometimes. Favorite one is slow is fast. Another one, little by little, little becomes a lot. Another one was ant size stepped, not even baby steps, but ant size steps. And then her favorite, it's not a matter of if I will heal, but when. I started to find that Wendy's voice was actually in my head as I would go throughout the day. And then I would tell my children these lessons as we were going about our day. Wendy says it's okay to rest. Wendy says no weed or gluten. Wendy says eat organic and so on. Slowly, my children started to become more like me. I watched this unfold with my very own eyes. I would see them resting. I would see them eat an apple. I would and tell them that it only has um, one ingredient, the apple. Or they would ask me, is this organic mummy in the grocery store? Or my four-year-old son would look at a food and ask, is this healthy mummy? I started to feel like I was breaking these generational patterns and providing this extra education to my kids. I also told my children that all feelings are okay. It's okay to feel angry and upset. Not necessarily take it out on other people, but it's okay to feel the feelings. This is the embracing concept that Wendy teaches. I'm learning about my diseases so that I can help my daughters one day. In fact, avoid having any diseases because I have two daughters and I have a son too. And as Wendy told me, I started to bring my daughters along on the journey and my son. Really, I was starting to lead a life that I was prouder of, that my children could model after. I was giving myself the love and a care intention that I'd always wanted externally, but I was giving it to myself. They say when you have kids, your life should be your lecture. I found this to start being true. One day I know that I will be thankful that endometriosis came into my life at such a young age and that I got so bad that I was forced, I, that it forced me to look inward. I had been extending myself to far too much to other people, like my partner, my three children, my family, meeting their needs, caring for, their, for them and others beyond myself. And I was neglecting myself. If endo would not have shown up, I would have kept going, giving to others to the point of exhaustion, not getting my needs met and not taking care of myself, burdened by projected shame and guilt. 
Parts of me are glad that it showed up because it forced me to make significant changes in my life. By taking this course, I really showed up for myself for the first time in my life and recognized that that was okay to do that. Didn't make me a selfish person. I showed up for my coaching calls weekly with Maxine and I showed up for the weekly group calls, bi-weekly calls with the team and the other members. I showed up by learning the content on the membership site and applying it diligently every week to my life. By showing up for me, I'm better able now to show up for my partner, my friends, my parents, my kids. For one of our group calls, Wendy asked us to write down a list of gains, not gaps, that we have made in the past 12 months. I was excited as there was a whole page of gains that I wrote down, like finding my voice, putting in tough boundaries, creating a life that I desire. When I finally found that I had endo in the summer of 2021, I was devastated, but I made a commitment to myself that I would do whatever it took for however long it took until I healed. This commitment has only grown stronger with time. What's next for me? Well, I'm currently thinking that I will do the alumni program for a while. This way I can still process the end of boss information and move forward and keep momentum. This feels like a good next step for me and I tend to look into counseling EMDR and do more trauma work and address other subconscious issues. I'm focused right now on my health and understand figuring out what's gonna be happening in the future may take some time. I intend to keep reading the books and I really like that quote that Wendy had on one of the membership sites that your life is really changed by the books you read and the people that you meet in your lifetime. And I think that's so true. These are the things that have the most influence on your growth by doing the program. I'm still connected with the community and I can still go at my own pace. I know I'm meant to do something great on this earth. I believe we all are. I just don't know exactly what that is right now. I feel like I'm in this cocoon of chaos, but I'm okay. All of my new close relationships were stressful. I have all I had all of sorry, all of these few close relationships I had were stressful and strained. I had all of these conditions and diseases. I didn't know what my purpose was. I've really been enmeshed with parents and partners and didn't have my own identity and I didn't know what I wanted. But now for the first time, I really feel that I can. And these parts that may have caused me pain, it's because they wanted to get my attention. Then there are these other emerging beautiful parts that wanted freedom, parts that want to take down the walls and connect with others, open up my heart, feel love and alive and joy and even ecstasy. Despite any of the challenges on the way, I feel I really now I'm on a good path, a part of being the Endomoss community. But I have a lot of work still to do, and I guess that's true for everyone who's on this Endoboss path. And we're supposed to keep working on ourselves and growing and growing and growing and listening to ourselves until we leave this planet. So I hope you enjoy listening to that because it was really um, beautiful to read. Uh, all the essays that come through me, my team obviously read them. And um, it's very powerful to kind of hear from Jessica, like what, what she has learned and gained from the program. And, you know, and again, I share this with you, with kindness from Jessica, you know, that, um, you know, what's possible. So I, I don't know where you are as you're listening to this on your end of boss journey. And, you know, read the book, listen to the podcast, join the programs. The next program I would recommend, I've opened up the End of Boss 21 Day Challenge. There's two 21 Day Challenges that you can do. There's the Unblock Emotional Blocks uh, and or there's the 21 Day End of Boss Challenge. So do go and check these things out. Um, they just allow you to get more comfortable with spending time on yourself. You probably, if you've been listening to me for a while, recognize that there's this uh, common denominator, which is that's why I interviewed Lewis, uh, Lewis Hollis last week is shame and guilt that, you know, that a lot of us have been either internalized subconsciously or absorbed from our environment or had it projected upon us because of the type of high degree sensitivity that we have. So the journey starts with just getting OK with making ourselves a priority. I couldn't do what I do now if I hadn't made myself a priority. I. I, I mean, I, when I look back to the mitochondria score, just how my organs were failing, I was like, I had a 15% chance of, of living. Like I was 
out of the box. I was so ill. Had I not put myself first, I wouldn't be here now. So again, what you have to navigate at the beginning of your journey is this comfort and more ease at that if by putting yourself first it doesn't mean that you switch off that people pleasing and that caring part it's just you get it into balance with yourself now this is a big challenge for a lot of women with endometriosis especially that you know the, the high performing women uh, women of, of any level in their career any age there's this uh beautiful passion this drive and connection to others because you probably know what others needs ahead of your own needs but this is why we need to turn this around. And like Jessica said, right at the very beginning, it's, it's an inside job. Healing is an inside job. Healing happens when you listen. And the best way to listen is to journal. So as I say, the 21 day challenge is the end of a challenge I have um, put back up onto the, the um, uh, healendometriosisnaturally.com forward slash programs page because there's been quite a big demand for it because you know there's it's completely different content to the unblock emotional blocks but it just gives you a chance to really in a very structured daily process of list I, I give you educational videos there's assignments there's a workbook and it allows you just to get that sense of what's it like to listen to myself and become comfortable with that because ultimately um it's you know you have the power to heal so i'm on today to kind of share that but i hope you enjoyed listening to uh jessica's journey uh we've got the success stories volume one book coming out in the next couple of months it's so amazing it gives me goosebumps to you know there's a lot of work goes into producing these books it just literally almost feels like producing another baby um you know, there's so many success stories now. And what I wanted to do in this book is present it in lots of different ways, kind of an overview of women. Obviously, we've changed names for, um, you know, for privacy purposes um, and changed some of the content, but just have an overview of the women before I'm giving you a snapshot of their beginning opening questionnaire and then their closing questionnaire. Again, obviously, things have been sort of blocked out to you know protect their privacy. And then there's kind of in their own words. And then there's uh, the, the interview with me, the transcript for those who have been comfortable in coming on sharing the pod. Because for those of you that are wherever you are in the journey, especially this month of March with endometriosis awareness, you know, you're going to hear a lot of sad stories and, you know, a lot of stories of, of doom and gloom and, uh, you know, lots of surgery and painkillers and drugs and women who have just gone through to hell and back. Um, and that's that can be quite depressing. And um, I want to be that that beacon of hope, that beacon of light. Um, <laughs> I was joking with my team saying I want this book to be I'll probably do a hardback version as well. But I want you almost to be able to feel that you can hold it to your chest at night as you go to sleep as it as it's kind of like your chest. It's like just gives you that hope and you know the possibility of healing. So it is possible. It takes time. So please watch that impatient part that's like it's not going to work for me it works for every single person but you know there are many elements you have to look at the five p's three daily basics and know that uh you know you have that inner guidance system that sort of sat nav system in there it's just learning how to tune in and to navigate all the different parts that you're going to have to be um navigating um as you go through the journey so anyway hope you find this inspiring and hope to speak to you all again soon Bye.